Hello Hastings and the rest of you in District 54, I'm Tom Wright, here with a special interview up at the State Capitol in the House here, the House of Representatives, where a lot of action has been taking place these last few months, um, and with your representative, Mr. Tony Jurgens. Tony. Hi Tom. Good to see you. Thanks for making the drive up here today. Yes, well thank you for making the time, I know you guys have been busy. We have, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind, it's been a lot of fun, and, and we are, uh, we've been busy, but and I think it'll stay that way throughout the end of session too. Yeah, it looks that way. Um, so we have a number of things to talk about here, Tony. Um, but first of all, this is our first time checking in since you've taken office. Tell us, how's it gone so far? Is it everything you'd ever dreamed it would be? It is. It's, it's everything that I expected it to be. Um, I've said many times that the only difference is the pace is even quicker than what I had anticipated, mm. um, which is a good thing. You know, we go from meeting to meeting and, and uh, sometimes it's hurry up and wait where you have four meetings in a, in a one hour time period then you get to a committee meeting and then you're there for two hours so then it moves a little bit slower so uh, but there's been a, a lot of information to to absorb and to learn and uh, i've enjoyed every minute of it well let's see here yeah a lot of things to talk about here um speed limit bill that you just proposed to address a uh, concern in, in hastings right in hastings right. Um, a budget surplus to talk about uh health care reform going on uh, there's a health insurance premium relief bill that uh, was passed um, and I understand there's some action going on right here today with uh, some reinsurance, yes. and we'll hear all about that. Um, also, um, Independent Council just voted for your first pay raise in, I think, almost 20 years, and so that's, um, we'll talk about that as well. And also, um, now past uh, Sunday alcohol sales. So let's go back to first the speed limits bill. Okay. Because uh, there's quite a story there. I understand MnDOT proposed some changes. They and did. And, uh, and you take it from there, what, what well, happened? Well, there's been a lot going on between MnDOT and the City of Hastings for I don't even know how long, over a year. And uh, MnDOT did a, a speed limit study and determined some areas in and around Hastings um, could stand to, to see an increase in the speed limit. Uh, one area that was of concern for me was the area on Highway 316 from the split on Highway 61 to just north of Tuttle Drive. And I, I know firsthand from when I was door knocking in that area last summer, talking to residents about how unsafe that road is already. And in fact, I had to walk through the ditches because there isn't an adequate shoulder to walk on. Um, there's no crosswalks, there's very little if any shoulder, um, there's no turn lanes. And MnDOT wants to, based on the speed study that they did, they wanted to raise the speed limit from 35 to 40 miles an hour. Uh, I met with MnDOT and asked if there was anything that, that they could do to hold off on that. They plan on resurfacing that road in 2021 mm -hmm. and there's no other plan as of right now as far as a safety study, but what I wanted to do was tie that into a safety study and see is there anything else that we could do in that area. Um, they indicated that they were already planning on, on increasing the speed limit, there wasn't really anything else that they could do. Um, so I decided to take a different approach to it and, and, and introduce legislation saying that they couldn't raise that speed limit until a safety study is done. Uh, we had a hearing last week in the Transportation Policy Committee. I uh, had three residents from the area that live in that area of 316 came up to testify. Um, had three council members, Council Member Balsanic, uh, Trevor Lund, and uh, Tina Fultz were here. Um, those three were here in support, and, and after, they, after the committee heard from the residents, they didn't need to hear any more testimony. They passed unanimously on to the next committee. So um, that's where it is. I'll have another hearing this week on, on that topic in the Transportation Finance Committee, I believe it is. How common is that for a bill to address the speed limit uh, proposal by MnDOT? How, how often does this come up? I don't you know. know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I maybe I started something. We'll you see. You might have, huh? <laughs> but it's funny because in the committee meeting, uh, Republicans and Democrats alike were chiming in, saying, "Yeah, that happened in my district too." Mm. And then after uh, the committee meeting, of talking with some other representatives, and they indicated the same thing. So it's not just my bill's very specific. And in, in fact, when I initially wrote the bill or had the bill drafted, it was to uh, a moratorium on the speed limits all the speed limit changes in the Hastings area. Mm. And I've narrowed that down to just that corridor on Highway 316. So I've narrowed um, my bill through an amendment process. And one of the one of the representatives I was telling that to, he said, no, don't make it narrower, make it broader. He said, yeah. all highways across the state and county roads. I mean, he wanted this, you know, a bigger, <laughs> a oh, bigger sure. picture. And that's not, not my intent. That's not what this bill will do. This is very specific to what can we do to address the safety needs for the people that live along Highway 316. 
And what is MnDOT's argument against uh, keeping it 35? You know, what they do is they actually monitor the speeds of what people are driving right now. And their proposal was to increase it to 45 miles an hour just based on what people are currently driving. And, and they negotiated with the city, and I appreciate that. They, they compromised and said, well, we'll only raise it to 40 instead of 35. Um, but their basis for doing that is what people are already driving, the speeds mm. that they're already driving. I see. So, you know, people might feel comfortable driving faster speeds along there, so that's something that I think we should be taking a look at. What, what can we do to make that so that the road, so that people aren't comfortable exceeding the speed limit there, so that they are adhering to a 35 mile an hour speed limit. And again, the next step is another committee? Another committee meeting, yes. Okay. And then at that point, will it be ready to go to the floor? Will it go to the House? I believe it will go to the floor at that point okay. unless it gets referred to a third committee. And at this point, I don't know what the path will be, but I think it'll go to the House floor after that. Okay. Um, another thing to talk about, uh, just announced the, the a budget surplus of $1.65 billion, uh, about $250 million more than they projected at the end of 2016. Um, what is the argument here at the Capitol? What should be done with that money? And where, where do you stand on that? Well, I think it, it to me, having a, a surplus again this year is pretty indicative that we're taxing people too much. So I think that what we need to do is some meaningful tax reform. Those uh, Minnesotans who are paying in too much tax, too much of their hard-earned dollars into taxes right now that created that, that, that budget surplus, I think we can find some areas where we can lower that and give them, them some tax relief. Now, as far as the extra money, there's always projects. I mean, that the good news is with a surplus is that you're, it's not a deficit, right? I mean, you've got the extra, the excess money to, to deal with. Um, the challenging part is then everybody comes with their hands out because they have good mm -hmm. programs that they want you to spend that money on. So um, I think we'll see some good programs, whether that's roads and bridges or education. I'm not sure where exactly we're going we're gonna to put that yet. That's something we're still in the early stages. Um, but uh, I think that what we'll be able to see out of this is some meaningful tax reform for middle, middle class Minnesotans. I see. By chance, is one of your hands going to be one of those out to maybe perhaps is there something in your, our district that you think? We have a few things that we, we have. Yeah, I've got uh, a bill for um, some improvements to the veterans home in Hastings and then also um, with the Hastings City Hall, some improvements there, some restoration work. Um, Health care reform, that was a, a big item in your campaign. You had, uh, mentioned it was a key issue that you heard from constituents as yes. well. Um, and uh, the legislature here, uh, you guys passed a uh, health insurance premium relief bill had passed, um, about yeah, $326 million in rebates for Minnesotans. Um, that was a pretty big deal. You know, that was, that was making the headlines and it was, it was contentious. You know, there's some late nights, I understand. Uh, not, tell yeah, us from your bit. perspective not, how not, that went. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. Um, is I've been told to expect later nights, I guess, so I'm ah. trying to keep it in, in perspective. Um, but no, we were, as, as I've talked about during the campaign, that was a, a big issue to Minnesotans. That's what I was hearing a lot of from when I was, when I was talking to, to people knocking on doors. And so one of the very first things that we did out of the shoot was the, the premium relief that you mentioned. Now this is just a one year premium relief. This, is, mm. this is, does not go into long term um, changes. It was just to help out for this year. There were some reform things in there as well, I guess, um, but primarily it was premium relief. And we signed that. We got that out of here real early and the governor signed that into law. So um, Minnesotans in the individual health care market are seeing some relief or they will probably in the next month is when they'll actually see it, but it's retroactive to January 1st. Now the next step, what we're taking up now is, the, is I, I'd call it step two, and that's reinsurance. And reinsurance, if you think of it, is like an insurance policy for insurance companies. So we take the, the ailments that cost insurance companies the most, mm -hmm. and we're gonna, if this passes, we'll supplement that. That'll, Minnesotans should see about a 17 or 18% decrease in their health insurance premiums because the insurance companies are getting that reinsurance, that money back from the state for the highest cost uh, health care premium or health care um, uh, claims. I see. 
That's kind of, that's your area, isn't it? As an insurance agent, is insurance. I'm an insurance agent. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of sometimes people will look over towards me when they, when we're talking about this. There's, there's a few insurance agents here, and we kind of lean on each other a little bit in that area. And what this doesn't do though is the next step is you know one of the reasons that that. Uh, health insurance premiums are so high is because the cost of health care is so high. Mm -hmm. That's down the road. That's the next step. We haven't addressed that yet. We have to figure out a way to put some downward pressure on the cost of health care so that then we can see some lower cost premiums as a result of that. I see. Do you see uh, enough time to perhaps fit another uh, health care reform item uh, in this session? I do, I do, because there are other, some of the areas, uh, we have staff people that are already working on the next steps, so I, yeah, we'll have time to at least address that if we can, you know, get everybody on board and get it through. Um, another thing that uh, went uh, well approved this year, the Sunday alcohol sales that removed the law to, to prohibit uh, liquor store owners to sell alcohol on Sundays. And I understand you were in favor of it. I, I voted yes. Yes. And uh, tell us uh, why and uh, well, what were you hearing from constituents on that? Well, it's funny because in the overall scheme of things, it might not be that big of a deal, but I heard from more constituents on that topic than probably anything else right. since I got here, since I've, I've gotten here. Um, and I did, I, I was planning on voting in favor of that to begin with. Um, but I did make a promise to a friend of mine who owns a liquor store who was not in favor of it. And I said, if this looks like it's, this was during the campaign, I said, if it looks like this is going to come up before the House, I'll call every liquor store in the district and get their perspective on it. And so I did that. I called everyone in, the, in my district in Hastings and Cottage Grove. Um, a couple didn't get back to me, um, but of, of those that I talked to, there was a slight majority that were in favor of Sunday sales, which surprised me a little bit because you keep hearing from people that said that the, you know, the independent liquor stores, the mom and pop type shops were not in favor of it because it was just going to increase their expenses. And there was some of that, but there was a slight majority that were in favor of it. And then as far as the constituents, I only heard from a couple of people that, that were not in favor of it. The vast majority of Minnesotans, of the people in our district, were, were in favor of it. And so it passed the House, passed the Senate, and the governor signed it into law. So starting July 1st, actually I think the first Sunday is July 2nd. So just before uh, the 4th of July, if you need to go out and stock up on a Sunday, you can do that now. There you go. And then to clarify, it's the option to be open on Sunday, correct? Liquor stores do not have to be open. That's correct. That's correct. Now they um, just, they, they have the option to make a business decision. Yes. I expect from everybody that I talked to, even if they weren't in favor of it, they said that they feel like they will have to be open in order to compete. Mm. But what the law does is takes away the prohibition against that where they were not allowed to and it just says you can, you're, you're, you can open if you want to on a Sunday. Moving on to the next one here with uh, a, a pay raise. Um, this was, uh, people may remember uh, that last year the independent council was formed. It was a constitutional amendment. Um, to form an independent council to decide your guys' salaries here mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. um, make, forcing you guys to make that decision. Um, and so it, it just came out that the council did vote for an increase from it looks like 31,100 to 45,000, which comes out to about 45% increase, which on the surface looks like that's a pretty good raise, mm -hmm. a pretty good raise. Um, but also to note though, it's the first increase in almost 20 years for state legislatures um, that many have argued that it was needed. Um, Tell us uh, your stance on this and your reaction to the raise. Well, when I uh, started my campaign, I didn't even know what the salary was. That's mm -hmm. not why I was doing it. Uh, I learned later what, what the salary was. And I actually learned on the doorstep, knocking on somebody's door about this commission that was possibly going to be named, depending on, I didn't know anything about that constitutional amendment at, at first. Mm -hmm. um, but the, as you mentioned, the constitutional amendment created this commission to make that decision. And I learned on the news over the weekend that what they are recommending or what they're coming up with that, the new salary of $45,000, I don't know when that takes effect. And I'll be honest, there's very little discussion among the legislators here mm -hmm. about that. Um, I don't think anybody here has done it for the money. Um, they, they do it because they want to make a difference. They want to, they want to, do good things for the people of Minnesota, the people of their district. Um, but there are some people whose jobs don't really lend itself very well to having a career and working here. And some of those people I know um, struggle with their bills, especially during session. Um, I'm fortunate I have the, the type of business as an insurance agent, 
where I can still do my job. Um, it, although I will say it's much harder than I thought. I thought mm -hmm. I would be able to do more of my job during session and it, that's been difficult. Um, but I've got other people in the office that are, are backing me up and helping me out. And then when session is over, I'll go back full time to what I was doing. Some people's, the job, their chosen profession doesn't lend itself as well to do that. So for them, I'm sure it's a, a, a very welcome to see this increase. And I believe it's next year that it will take effect okay. as the pay raise. Um, so that's when you can take me out to lunch is next you got year. It. You, you got, got that. Um, let's see here. Any other items going on here at the, up at the legislature? Anything under, flying under the radar? Perhaps that hasn't been in the news that's kind of going on. Any, any water cooler talk? Juicy any water, water cooler, cooler talk? talk? No, there's, there's a lot of uh, different programs going on education related. I'm on mm -hmm. the Education Finance Committee and every day we have two or three or four groups of people that are testifying on, on different different bills or different programs that, that need funding. So um, there's never, um, you never run out of good programs, you never run out of good ideas. Um, unfortunately, there's not unlimited resources, so we have to take those all into consideration and, and you know, hopefully pick the ones that are gonna do the, the most to close the achievement gap. That's the thing that we hear about um, day after day in our committee meeting is what, how, will this, how will this close the achievement gap? And so that's something that, that we take into consideration with all of these bills. How can those viewers at home, how can they get a hold of you or stay up to speed on what you're up to? Yeah, send me. I get a lot of emails. I try to keep up with them. I'm a little behind right now again, but uh, rep.tony.jurgens at house.mn. Or you can call me 651-296-3135 and, and uh, either leave me a message, I'll call you back, or my legislative assistant, Mike, will call you back. Great. Well, Tony, thank you very much for your time. Tom, thank Again. you very much for coming up. I appreciate very good it. To see. Yes, of course. There you go. Your representative, Mr. Tony Jurgens, for 54B here in the House of Representatives uh, at this, up in St. Paul, the great capital. Nice building you have here, by the way. Oh, isn't it beautiful? They did a remarkable job with the restoration. They did. They did a great job. So if you haven't seen it, coming up here and checked it out, you should do that. Definitely check it out. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.